Given that it's only been holding sales since last May, it's a wonder how WB & Sons can continue to fill their catalogue with intriguing rarities every six weeks. And yet, it's done it again, with everything from a Morris Minor that doesn't know if it's coming or going, to modern classics set across the block at its Newcastle base. It's impressive, Jeff. There's a huge variety here and the standard is ever higher. And uh, I thought we'd start with this bit of American muscle here. All right. What do you know about GMC Sierra pickups, Jeff? Well, I know that this one isn't standard. Apart from the, the matte finished paint, it's got a Chevy LSX engine under the bonnet. Amazing. Naturally aspirated, producing around 400 horsepower with potential that if you supercharge it, you probably get about a thousand. You're making a statement if you buy this. Yes, it's very muscular, let's say. But uh, this is more my kind of Sierra here, I have to say. Okay, okay. Ford Sierra XR 4x4, and it's the first generation shape, so it's got the flat front. You know, this has got potential, this car, but it's, it's I think, fairly priced. These early gener generation Sierras are getting rarer. Do love them on the seven spokes, and like you say, a little bit of TLC, you could bring this up to be a top-notch example, couldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. And being four-wheel drive, of course, it's a, an all-year round. But we couldn't go past these two fabulous Fiestas. No. You couldn't get more contrasting ones. Let's start with this XRV van. So yes, this was a factory edition, and very little is known about these. A standard Mark III panel van that raided the RS accessories catalog for the body kit, and in this case, the wheels. I mean, it's basically a standard van. It's a 1.8 naturally aspirated diesel, wonderfully restored. I mean, the paint is immaculate. So yeah, if you were running a small business and you wanted to stand out from the corporate crowd, this is the way to do it. The lovely radiant red paint job. I love these blue go faster stripes. You need to leave that. It's, it's superb, absolutely superb. But of course, talking about collectibles, this Mark II XR2. Well, these have rocketed, haven't they? Absolutely rocketed in value and desirability. I remember when these were everywhere, a bit of a bad reputation, sort of a backwards baseball cap kind of car, cherry bomb on the back. Not anymore. Well, this is a lovely straight example, sensibly priced. Quite a late car, this one, isn't it, F-Reg? Yes, of course, yeah. They would have gone to Mark III uh, a little bit later in the year, wouldn't they? So, But it looks great on the pepper pots. The interior's absolutely superb. Well, look, I've got, we're going to have a look at this Morris Minor. We'll just go to the front of the car, Jeff. I'm already, stood, I'm already stood at the front of the car. Got, what? Oh, hang on. No. <laughs> so I'm very confused. So which is the front? You know this, don't you? So yes, I know, and I only know that because the back, which is the front, has reflectors on it. How clever is this? So it's basically two front halves of a minor put together, but really well done. I mean, you, you, you can't see the join. It's really nicely done. I love the fact that he's badged it as a minor 2000. <laughs> All right, get I mean, you, it, yeah. is, it is a minor 1000. There is only one engine, the 1098cc. Um, this was actually converted in the mid 90s. Basically, it was in the national press. It's been on Blue Peter and then subsequently restored 2013. It's fully road legal, as I understand it. Yeah. Imagine if you're just following it on the on the A1 or something. You're like, um, yeah, there's a minor going backwards up the A1. <laughs> I love it. Well, look, there's more delicacies this way, so let's uh, head into the hall here. Well, it's definitely one for you here, Phil. Yes, I do like an X150, and this is an XKR, fairly early model, so it's the 4.2 supercharged. So this is a lovely, lovely spec. All aluminium, 4.2 supercharged V8, 400 horsepower. What's not to like, right? No, plenty to like. I mean, I prefer my performance cars a little more hot hatchy. A bit more pocket rocket. Yeah, and this is a, a late full fat Clio 182. They're on the cusp now of becoming really sought after and, and good ones are getting expensive. Well, look how Clio Williams values went. So that's your next one, right? Couldn't get more contrasty, a bit more bread and butter with this Volvo 340 here. 340. I really like these. And again, as a sort of a sensible daily driver, sort of practical classic, this for me, still ticks a few boxes. A little bit of rear wheel drive action as well. Yeah, absolutely. Love the boxy styling. Quite a late one. Standards of the day, it was uh, pretty safe, right? We drove these off buildings. <laughs> Back to Jags, or in more particular case, a Daimler. How lovely is this? I mean, this is a, this is a, a truly immaculate example, isn't it? 38,000 miles, lovely spec. It's a 1988, so it's a, it's a pre-facelift one. They did the facelift in 1990, where they uh, smoked the rear tail lights. A lot of people didn't like the squarey styling of the XJ40, but I personally love it, and I think the proportions are absolutely mint. As you say, it's got low mileage. Unmarked leather, it's lovely. And being a Daimler spec, it's just that little bit more special. It's got the sort of lamb's wool rugs and the picnic tables. This car, Superb. yeah, is in exceptional condition. What about if you prefer your prestige a little more German? Well, this was what the Jags were up against, of course, the sort of ever mighty German opposition and this, what, C126? 560 SEC. Now I love this. This one's done a, around 145,000 miles, but it, it wears it so well. 
yeah, we know, we know they're capable of that, right? So it needs a bit of tidying up, but it's just such a great, you could, you know, look after this and keep it forever. I reckon it would be uh, a really good, a good project. How about staying with Germany? Nice start, a classic golf driver. Well, of course, GTI prices have gone mental. So then you go for something like this, a Mark II driver. Yeah, a little bit low on P-slots. I mean, if, if you're gonna put P-slots are great, aren't they? I mean, it's just lovely. It looks good. Yeah, automatic this one. And it's, a, it's one of the last of the small bumper models, which again, I know a lot of purists prefer the small bumper look. So that's the way it goes. Another retro classic here though. Yeah, so this is a Toyota Corolla liftback. Now a few non-standard parts on this. Ferrari Mondial wheels, so a little bit different. I mean, it looks good. The stance is right. And you know, I could see you turning up at like a retro rides gathering or something like that. But if you were away at a car show and you needed somewhere to stay, You'd date that, wouldn't you? What a bargain these are. Mazda Bongo. Well, I can confirm, having just stayed in a, a motorhome that cost a princely sum of £90,000, that this, at like one twentieth of the price, is, uh, is absolutely much better value. Electric everything. These are quite underrated, aren't they? What a, what a great thing to have. Take it down to Le Mans, whatever. Just... You're getting an awful lot for your money with that, aren't you? I'd say, absolutely. Well, look, we can loop back round uh, and see some more delights over here. So, so wander through. So, Mr. Ruggles, we've been expecting you. It's uh, DB9 here. Oh, no, a Bond pun. <laughs> well, you've got to do it, haven't you? Quite like this. 2005 DB9, California Sage, which I think is a really nice colour. Really good colour. I thought yeah. that. And, of course, the good thing about this, cheap Rotex. <laughs> 2005. So, uh, it uh, predates the uh, hike in the Rotex of 2006. Given, given the small difference between DB7 and DB9 prices, I, I think this is very hard to resist. And you'd have a DB9 all day long, I think. But I don't know, for me, that little Japanese pocket rocket next to you is where I, my money would be at. This is really, really lovely. I mean, you know how badly Mark 1 MR2 is going to basically disintegrate. I know, this one is very clean, very straight. T-bar model. T-bar model, been restored, 37,000 miles. Looks great in red with the black leather. Having been restored, the paint's really clean on this, so I think it's a, it's, it's a lovely, lovely example. There's a, a lovely E36 over here. I know there's loads of minis here, Jess, so I'm trying to get you away from them. E36 325 here. You know, they're renowned for doing big mileages, aren't they? But this yeah. one, 30,000 miles only. Bit of a unicorn in that sense, and a manual as well. So, a really nice car. That's a really, really good buy there. Anyway, enough of that mini. Again, WB and Sons have turned up a great selection of late minis. This is probably the pick of the bunch. Amaranth Sport Pack, manual car, Japanese import, air conditioning, and it's immaculate. You're gonna to struggle to find a better example than that, and that's where I'll leave it. It does look good. It does look good, you can't, can't lie. I just, I prefer my British classics a bit more sedate. So this Triumph 2000 has got caught my eye. Lovely Triumph 2000. I just think this is gorgeous. It's a really elegant car. This one's a really nice example. The paint is, is pretty near perfect. The interior is mint and really sensibly priced. You know, we've been worried about going out of the reach of perhaps the beginner enthusiast. A sort of circa five grand. This is a lovely entry into classic car motoring, isn't it? It's nice low mileage example as well, sub 60,000 miles. So. I think that's really good there. We've got a couple of other oddities over here. Look at that Type 2. Yeah, lovely Type 2, 1963, cream over blue. I love that this is pretty untouched, like it's still effectively the original bus. It's got the sort of rock and roller bed thing going on in the back there, but untouched condition really. And I just think, well, that's, that's the way to go, and it's sensibly priced as a result. sensible estimate as well. So I think this will be really popular. It's a right-hand drive as well, so original UK market. This caused us a few head scratches, didn't it? This Opel Mansa. Yes, 1988, which was the final year. It's a hatch, a GTE, and we wondered if it was an exclusive or not, didn't we? Because it's got the exclusive wheels and the quad headlamps. It's not, but it's been upgraded to suit brown with a brown interior and brown tinted glass. And I think that combination works really, really well. Yeah, I mean, exclusive or not, the condition is great. Very well, uh, well collectible, I'd say. But what variety you've got? We've moved over from that Type 2 to this Manta. Minis in the background, a DB9. I mean, we're only really scratching the surface of the cars that are available here. There's a pre-war Humber. Outside, there's an MG Maestro. So when's the sale? The sale is on April the 30th. Um, cars are still being added to the catalogue as we speak. So there'll be plenty to get your teeth into. Head to the website and see what's on offer. Mm -hmm.